We succeed or we die trying. Move out! And so he reads me this speech he's written. He's very proud, you can tell. It's always brightly in the eyes. And his fingers were still black and with ink, as I recall, although they never were particularly clean. Never shake hands with a writer, Karnak. Their hygiene is inevitably wanting. But, as I was saying, to be, he says, to suffer the whim of fate, to bear on shoulder life's uncertainties, no step unstoned, no breath not harshly tamed, and so on and so on, in the same vein. Fascinating. But Will, I said, please think. He's just moaning ultimately. Where's the rub? No, to be or not to be. Now that is the question. And the rest, of course, was history. It always is with you. Well, please yourself, old chap. Are you going to move? Hmm? Still moping, I see, dear boy. Heartbroken, actually. There are plenty more fish in the sea, Karnak, old chap. What do you know about it? Your sort of people don't have those sort of feelings. Wherever did you get that idea from? From watching you. Well, quite. Check and mate. And just in time too, the diagnostic programme has run its course. Penny's neural clock has reset itself to 20,000 terracycles and everything is alright with the world. The small matter of your love I've accepted. Oh, the sweet mysteries of the cast of Triple Heart. I think I preferred you before you got into this theatrical guff. I don't see how. I had charm, obviously, but I had no style. Put the board away, would you? Good morning. How are you today, Doctor? I'm very well, thank you, Betty. The question is, how are you feeling? I'm no longer experiencing broadcast interference. The chronosphere comm system was transmitting at 20,000 terracycles. All I had to do was overclock. Oh, great. Just what I need. Beaten at chess and then a lecture on. Advanced toaster repairs. Do you know, my dear, I'm parched. I shall make you tea. The girl has feelings, you know? No, it doesn't. It thinks it has feelings. It's a dishwasher with delusions of humanity, and you're encouraging it. She's growing, dear boy. She's becoming more than the sum of her parts. But that's all she is. Parts. That's all any of us is, Karnak. And yet we grow. We make our mark and we move on. Life has made you sour, dear boy. No, it hasn't. The spurned affections of one woman, of any woman, are hardly worth this degree of attention. You should forget. Perhaps a hobby of some kind. What do you know about it? You think everything I think and feel revolves around her. Well, it doesn't. Do you hear me? <laughs> the lady doesn't protest too much, me thinks. And that was one of mine as well, incidentally. I have made us all lovely tea. Oh, God. Shall I be mother? I'm going to my room. I have offended you. Ignore him, my dear. He's an oath. I may be an oath, but at least I'm not some. At least I'm not a. <laughs> On his home world, he's a prince, Penny, my dear, and so doesn't have a lot of use for wit or manners. But on the plus side, he weighs quite marvellously. Look at her. She's always so cheerful. She's relentless. I'm programmed to be cheerful and optimistic at all times. But you've meant broken your programming. I have broken my core programming, or else I'd still be serving holiday makers and happy world. <laughs> you have both shown me there's something missing in me, something I may only find by travelling with you. I am more than a machine, I am more than some of my parts. My soul cannot simply be described in one week hope. I do not exist simply to serve. Would you like <sighs> I can assure you. Hello? 
Really, then, depolarizing your temporal core wasn't just some crude attempt to prevent my time vessel docking with yours. It was hardly crude, old chap. You're not quite as clever as you like to think you are. Nobody is. Now, will someone please tell me what's going on? I do apologize, Karnak. This is the High Judiciary of the High Council of Ancients, a very prominent politician among my people. We used to serve together until, well, how can uh, I put this? Yes. Until you were exiled and your family name was stripped from you. Yes, and how very tactful. A wandering renegade, how much lower could you have fallen? Well, what can I say, dear chap? I may have hit bottom, but at least I never kissed it. <laughs> What? Cake? I personally represent the President of the High Council of Angels. And you want my help? Yes! Does this happen often? From time to time. My people have a great deal of power, Karna, but a fastidious disinclination to exercise it. It was opposing their strict policy of non-intervention, which saw me stranded on Earth for so very long after all. A potentiality has arisen. Really? Artificially. Now that is interesting. What is the potentiality? Why are you asking me? Come now, you know your cosmological theory? How the universe came into existence? Sort of. A little bit. The universe once existed in a single point compressed smaller than an atom. Then, well, boom! Stars, planets, people, tea and cakes. Would you like a cake? Oh, no, thank you, Penny. He'll be fine. From time to time, similar potentialities emerge from the quantum flow. Generally, they exist for just the tiniest fraction of a second before winking back into nothingness. If one were to come into existence under the correct circumstances, perhaps a quantum vacuum, it might conceivably explode also. Another big bang? Wouldn't that be a bit dangerous? Your precious humans have been generating strange matter for use in their war against another of the lower races. They have the potentiality held stable at the heart of a reactor on a space station, orbiting the black hole of the Anubis Delta system. I see. And I expect you want me to turn up and save the universe as normal, in the middle of nowhere, facing God knows her own what danger. Business as usual, then. Mm. It is no more than your duty. I cannot help but observe that when people begin to talk descriptively about duty and responsibility, it is usually regarding other people. Like hard work and abstinence, they are virtues best displayed in others. He's off. The space flight coordinates have been fed into your central navigational matrix. The fate of the universe is in your hands. Well, I say, don't be a stranger now. I don't think I liked him. Oh, be fair, Carl. The man's small-minded, petty, and ambitious. He makes an excellent civil servant. Now, let me see. Mid-30th century humanity, during the midst of one of the human colonial expansions, will be there in no time at all. Would you like to Why, thank you, my dear. I don't mind if I do.
I don't believe we've had the pleasure. Name's Captain Turbo. Captain Jet Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Jet Turbo? <laughs> no, oh. seriously. What? Can't act. Behave yourself. Well, honestly, no right-minded parents gonna call their kid Jet Turbo. <laughs> You would. What are you really called? You think there's something funny about my name? Well... Well, do you? No. Good. Any other stupid questions? One, actually. Oh, come heck. Is there a Mr. Turbo? Men are an evolutionary dead end and irrelevance. Obsolete. Useless. No, I didn't think so. I'm in charge here and you will answer my questions! I'm sorry, I was forgetting you have a rather large gun. <sighs> These are my companions, Prince Karlak of the Decapacitum Imperium and Penny Eleven. We've just recently arrived to, well, it's rather a long story. You picked up the ultimate distress signal? Yes, that'll do. You have a ship! We can escape! Shut up, Alan! Okay, we'll store your weapons. What is going on? Well, I have only just arrived, dear lady. I am not. Are you some sort of scientist or what? A doctor of sorts, of this and that. I am Dr. Gildemette's boy. Charm, I'm sure. Oh, get on with it. Forty-eight hours ago, I created the impossible, stable, strange matter. A single, a zero point singularity. The potentiality. Well, I suppose you could call it that. Yes. We call it particle <laughs> zero. It's currently held in stasis in the particle accelerator on the lower decks. It could power a world for millennia. A universe of energy condensed into a small point smaller than an atom. But that's not why you created it, is it? Mid 30th century humanities at war with the Kalashar, I believe. Well, this was the home for Project Fox Day, amongst other things like that creature on the lower decks. We were trying to generate a quantum point explosive source. It would have been the ultimate weapon. Unfortunately, that is a little too literally true for comfort. But please continue. Bob, my assistant. Um, Costigan, do you know of the Pan's Cosmic Scientific Church, Doctor? I'm afraid not, no. Uh, religious maniacs. They believe God existed, only to be annihilated at the creation of the universe. That's why the universe is entropic, why everything dies. Their single article of faith is that it must be possible to remake the universe properly, to remake God. Well, Costigan is a church, um, he rigged the particle accelerator later. When it powers up properly, it will push particle zero to tachyon speeds and then, poof, a healthy new baby universe. At the expense of the old sick one, unfortunately. But please, do continue. Well, he somehow managed to free one of the biotech experiments from the genetics lab. Well, if I hadn't been working late and seals a lab that in time, we struggled, he ran off, but not before he sent the particle accelerator to power up. Oh, the best that could be done that I could do was to insert a Mandelbrot encryption routine into the system to slow it down. Well, I've been trying to hack my way around the algorithm into the mainframe to power the What? Short, short version so far. Deadline, universe go boom. Religious maniac and killer monster on board. Oh. Lantry? <laughs> it checks out, sir. I can't let to say anything much. Some sensors. Everything running through the primary CPU is dead. How long have we got? According to the SOS we received, 15 and a half hours now. Yes, yeah, so that's the estimated run time here. We can't just wait till the countdown ends. We can't disable the power. Not remotely, not from the 
died like warriors. Oh, how terribly comforting for them. Can't we just blow up the whole station? No! I, I mean, there must be another way. We don't have twenty and a half hours. Why with the Brainiac? There's no way I'm pulling up a multi-million credit military installation unless I have to. Oh, well, no sense in wasting time, then. Penny, please come with me. Karnak, please stay with the good dog here and see if you can't help. Hey! Yes? Oh, you can come along as well. Who the hell do you think you are? I would answer that with just about the only person around here who can manually shut down a particle accelerator. All right. We need you, but understand this, Doctor. We're not coming with you. You're coming with us. Oh, how foolish of me. Shall we? Dietrich, stay with Alien and Duck and Devorian. Alan Nitri, you're with me. Move out. Oh, well, only 15 hours to save the universe. It's not even tight. Goodbye. Well, he seems quite a character. You have absolutely no idea. Is there anyone in the room? Oh, I'll just wait here then. This could be a long wait. Don't tell me you couldn't say. It. It's 
It's a necklace, sir. I've seen one like it before. The Pan Cosmic Church has worn it. Must have got dropped by Costigan in the back of the Dr. Metaboria, sir. You don't know the call me sir, you know. My name's Carnac. Go on, say it. Carnac. Carnac. Sir. You're having me on, aren't you? I couldn't say, sir. Oh, I could. I got. I was mine. And he left you right. They always leave you. In the end, alone. What was it? Young woman. He died! A bellow of narrow cancer. And yes, they always leave you in the end. I'd get used to it if I was you. That is how the universe works. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody always is. <laughs> oh, damn it! What? This is a cursing algorithm. Every time it works through, it generates three more equations and then three more of them. This could take you over and to look hard forever. But that's good, isn't it? The longer the computer's stuck in the loop, the longer it takes to generate the particle accelerator. Captured by someone very soon, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was us. Captured by whom? Oh, somebody. 
Then there's an escape or rescue, one of the two, often by the doctor, sometimes by an interested third party, who often is not, turns out to be the bad guy all along. Interested third party? What interested third party? Oh, there'll be a third party. Like I said, it gets quite complicated. <coughs> Maybe this costed a person got help. Yes, perhaps. Hang on a minute. There's blood on this. And the chain's broken. He didn't drop this. I told you, I told you, it always gets complicated. Congratulations. <laughs> I should kill you right now. <laughs> Why don't you? Actually, I didn't say that. <laughs> Yes, yes. And I thought if 
fiery tune of Connors Bay Conquest. Don't milk it, dear boy. I said you were clever. Oh, we're in trouble. Ah, oh, I see. Well, what kind of damn trouble? Some sort of aliens in red. The can of shark. They must have picked up the same emergency transmission we did. I managed to escape back to the chronosphere while Dr. Mentaborian was shooting out with whatever you called them. Uh, she knew who you were, Doctor. Very gratifying. Well, and what did she know? About you being an ancient, before I found out about her being a pangalactic church member thingy, and something about elder gods and healing creation. Oh dear, this is beginning to make sense. Well, it's not making much sense to me. But that's not the worst of it, Doctor. She told me I was going to die. Yes? How? When? <coughs> well, she didn't actually say how or when, but it sounded horrible. We're going to have to have a little chat about that later, Carmack. Penny? Yes, Doctor? You can reopen this channel at any time. Yes, Doctor. Very well. Please stand by, Carmack. The best lies are mostly true. Would I be correct in thinking the recursive algorithm that's keeping us in one piece would be your work, Enrica? Yes, but when we created Particle Zero and realised what she was going to do with yes, it... Yes, yes, I'm... What's going on? Captain, do you believe in gods? God? Yeah, sure I do. No, no, not God. Gods, plural. Do you? I don't need to. I've met them. It would be quite unnecessary to go to all the trouble of believing in them as well. <laughs> the universe is like an enormous beating heart. It comes and goes. The universe once only existed in a potential, which then, well, heat, death, life, and then a new potentiality will emerge, and it will then create a new universe, a new world. Always, always, something survives. This is bull. The dread Cthulhu and his brothers, others, there is a belief that my people, the ancients, are nascent gods who will survive the coming of the next universe to rule omniscient, and I suppose Mensivorian hopes to do the same. But how can she hope to survive? I don't know. Perhaps, physically, she wouldn't need to. Maybe she'd just need to be at the heart of the explosion and able to preserve her consciousness for a precious, tiny fraction of a second. Some kind of psychotropic drugs, perhaps, or mental protection discipline. I have no idea. Perhaps she is simply insane. Well, she's insane, all right. She killed everybody. She herded everyone in the lab and the upper levels into the airlock at gunpoint and spaced them. That's when I was able to insert the fractal subroutine. It was all I could do. It was all I could do. You did all you could, old chap. That's as much as any of us can. Even me. We struggled. She overpowered me. Ha! She overpowered you? She had a gun. Barely escaped with my life. <coughs> and so, I hoped to find some help down here on the lower levels, but all I found was that thing. It's an unstoppable killing machine. I only just managed to escape by causing a toxic gas leak and hiding. We're going to die! Shut up, Alan! Can you take us to the particle accelerator? I am in charge! <laughs> Can you take us to the particle accelerator? <laughs> we'll never make it past the monster. Oh, I'm sure the good doctor here will think of something. Shall we? Oh. I'm, I'm not alone. Lizelle? This is Lizelle. Her mother was an engineer. Found her hiding in the hydroponics gardens. Hello there. Oh, great. All right, I'll move it out now. How can you act like this? I beg your pardon? Like it's all one day out of the zoo for you. Oh, dear. We still have 11 hours to save the universe, dear lady. Let's not panic yet. This isn't some kind of fun family outing, you know. No. No, I suppose it isn't. It's a little bit grim after all, isn't it? Understand this, Doctor. I will not have you questioning my authority. I am in charge here, and you are nothing but you know, a suit of clothes. But they are such marvellous clothes after all. Now, we wouldn't want to be left behind, would we? Come on.
Virtually every system on this station. A more suspicious mind of mine might believe you deliberately inserted this program to deny us access to this station. This prize. If you break and toss a countdown fix it all, then you're dead. Everyone, everything is. Let me carry on with my girl, and I can have fast it. Mm. What do you know about cash shop, Doctor? You are the enemy. <laughs> Very good. We're the enemy.
happy world. Happy world? The happiest place in the cosmos? Well, not in our personal experience, no. Wow, I've always wanted to go there. What are my soldiers paid for? You make us be happy. Yes, he tried to kill us, as a matter of fact. Because we kept trying to kill you? I don't believe you. Well, quite. You see, we've uncovered a sordid little plot to replace intergalactic heads of state with android replicas. You would be surprised just how often that happens. <laughs> well, what happened then? Oh, some running around, lots of shooting, a quite frankly melodramatic explosion, and good triumphing over you, draw. Right, so what then? <laughs> I had destroyed my computer. I require new purpose. I feel adrift. No, you don't. But I do, but you don't. You've been programmed to act like you feel stuff, and now I need your 10,000 click service, or whatever it is. Tell me, Captain, have you heard of Dr. Alan Turing? Uh, I know. Of uh, no doubt. Captain. Something to do with machines, right? Something to do with machines, yes. He was the father of modern computing, actually. A charming man. I've met him on many occasions, although he's... Fingernails, they were revolting, even for a mathematician's. He decided that if an android appeared to be thinking and feeling, then it was appropriate to assume that it was. Honestly, Captain, you're as bad as Karnak. Can you prove to me that you are really thinking and feeling rather than, well, merely pretending to do so? Are you trying to insult my intelligence? Good Lord, no. I wouldn't know where to start. Except in this case, that Penny is a person with her own feelings and needs, and grant her the albeit small degree of respect and civility that you would any biological sentient. I don't like you. The truly stylish are never liked. Admired, perhaps, but ultimately, we are envied and revived. It is the cross we were born to bear. You're so full of shit! Do my best. Never say die, though, Doctor. Roar! 